This is what we face after six years of so-called peace. In the east, Red China pushes to the shores of the Pacific. These are the sights they see at the frontiers of Hong Kong, the refugees streaming from the chained world to the free. To the northward, in Korea, the two worlds, theirs and ours, have already clashed in open combat, and these victims of the struggle to contain the march of communism, will they be the last or the first? Look to Berlin, the meeting place of East and West, on our European doorstep, and read the ominous signs, riot and terror, demonstration and disorder, the conquest of the minds of the rising generation. If these are the forces deployed today, who can tell what might be launched tomorrow? Can we be sure that tension and mistrust so deeply stirred can be dispelled by peaceful means? We need ambulance drivers, control room staff, welfare workers, nurses. There's a job for everyone. Now, what about it, eh? No thanks, I'm fine. It's all good in my ears. Is that for anyone? Oh, you're yeah. right. Hi, Joe. What's your problem? Nice to see you. How's it going? Oh, it's not, Chum. Anybody think I was trying to touch him for five bob? What, no recruits? Only three. What about you, Joe? Me? Yes, you. After all, you know most of it backwards from last time. You're just the type we want. No. I'm on the London run. Only get home three nights a week now. Got to think of the wife and kids, you know. That's just what you would be doing if the balloon goes up. Very funny. Wouldn't make Gwen laugh, though. Well, talk it over with her. If you change your mind, let me know. By the way, I'm in charge of your Swakely's district now. Yeah, they told me. Well, that one. Cheerio, sure, Jim. Good afternoon, madam. May I tell you something about the welfare side of civil defense? Well, I haven't much time at the moment. This won't take a moment, madam. If you wouldn't mind just stepping this way. It must be like old times, Jim. Yeah, a bit too much for my liking. I suppose they're trying them out, see if they still work. Margie, come away from that sandpit. If Jimmy's with you, bring him too. Told you not to play there before. All right, Daddy. Jimmy, that was Daddy on his way home. He says we mustn't play here. Just as we're really getting in. Come on, gang. Yes, but why should blokes like Bob do all the dirty work? If he can give up an evening a week, so can I. Now, look here, Joe, I've had enough. It was bad enough during the war when you had to do it night after night. When you did have an evening off, I was up to my elbows in nappies, babies, bottles, and I don't know what else. There was no end to it. Now when the kids are older and we could enjoy an evening off, you want to stick a tin hat on your head again. Honestly, you make me tired, really, you do. Well, somebody's got to do the job. Why does it have to be you? Those awful sirens. Why can't they leave us alone? I'm blaming for trying to be prepared this time. This time? You talk as if we were at war already. Well, things don't look too rosy, do they? Well, I've got worries enough without thinking about that. And if there's going to be another war, there's nothing we can do to stop it. For goodness sake, let's enjoy what time we have left. I know, dear. Still, wouldn't have done much good last time if everybody stuck their head in the sands, would it? Hello, dear. Enjoy the film? Mm, I loved it. I was most impressed with one of those small films. You know, the sort that usually bore me so. This one was about the state of the world today. And when I came out, there was a recruiting campaign in the foyer. And, well, it was that man, Charles. Before I knew what had happened, I joined up. Do you know, I'm very glad I did. Hey, Joe, coming over. Any time you want me roller, it's around the back. What are you dressed up like that for? Oh, I'm a casualty this morning. And right now I'm meant to be trapped in that bombed house just along the road. I didn't know you joined civil defense. No, I haven't. But when you're retired like me, you'll find out you've a lot of time in your hands. I promised Bob Eccles I'd help him out. Well, cheerio. See you later. Cheerio, boy.
Party, dismount. Party number four reporting for exercise, sir. Now, you know your drill. This house has been hit by H.E. and one person is missing. Make your reconnaissance and carry on from there. Right. You children must keep back. I don't want you to get in the way. Just a minute, Bob. Sorry, I'm late. Over there in half a tick. Hold it, boys. We're not ready. Milk roundsman. He's talking to John Davis, builder's foreman. 
Oh, we need everybody we can get to the knowledge of building oh, construction. Yes, who else? Mr. and Mrs. Rankin. Oh, yes, I know them. That's a friend of theirs, Colonel Braithwaite. Over there in the corner is our best capture so far, Joe Mercer, Pullman car attendant. He was a rescue man in the last war. Good. He's talking to Sally Faulkner, a commercial artist, and Jock McKenzie, retired builder's clerk. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, very glad indeed to see you here. Though I admit, I could wish there had been rather more of you. Now, uh, we all hope very sincerely that the training you're about to receive will never have to be put into practice. But there is one thing certain, and that is that we've got to be prepared. In the last war, fire caused a great deal of damage and very heavy casualties. In the next war, the fire situation might well be a great deal worse, because we should have to deal with the heat flash of the atomic bomb one of the most potent of fire raisers. We therefore have to consider the heat flash of the atomic bomb, the small magnesium incendiary bomb, the phosphorus bomb, and the oil and petrol bomb. Right, Joe. Break for ten minutes. Right, everyone. Ten minutes. Well, how's it going? First rate. Couldn't be better. Good. Look, um, I wanted to talk to you about that rescue vacancy at Swakely's. Have you asked Joe Mercer if he'd like the job? No, I thought perhaps you'd like to speak to him yourself. I'm going to discuss the work with him. Oh, well, let's. Joe, wait a minute, will you? Hello, Joe. We've got a vacancy for a full-time rescue instructor at Swakely's. It would mean you're going in a full course to one of the three home office schools, uh, Fowlfield or Tamworth Castle or Easingwold. Uh, you'd probably go to Easingwold. It's near York. Now, you've done very well in your basic training. I know you're the man for the job, and I'd be very glad if you'd apply for it. I think you'd stand a very good chance of getting it. But, of course, you realize that it would mean giving up your present position. Thanks for the tip, Mr. Latham. I know most of the details, but will this be a steady job? Oh, yes. It'll be a long time before we're through with all our training. Well, it would mean that I could be home more. Gwen's always saying that life would be easier if I could get a job locally. <laughs> I'm your man. Good man, Joe. I'm very glad to hear it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Hope you had a pleasant journey. Will you please go into the second door on the right? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Second, second door on the right, please. Good afternoon. I do not need to remind those of you who served in civil defense in the last war of the wonderful spirit which pervaded your service. A spirit which inspired rescue personnel to heroic deeds, not in the heat and excitement of battle, but in a cold and dispassionate realization that there were lives to be saved. And not the least of your duties will be to develop and to foster that spirit in the new civil defense organization. Our objective is to secure in peacetime a fully trained and equipped civil defense organization ready to go into action at short notice. Everybody knows that the atomic bomb is a very terrible weapon. What everyone does not know is that we can get considerable protection against its effects from quite ordinary things. Ordinary buildings, different types of shelters, all can play their part in giving us protection against the effects of an atomic bomb explosion.
Take a nap. Bit of please, sir. Some show today, eh? An eye opening. You don't have to tell me you've got to be trained for this job. What about a game of snooker? I'll be cleaned up. Yeah. I'm flaked out. Give me a game tomorrow. Cheers. is waiting, ready to go to the station. Course isn't finished yet. We're at war. We didn't expect a declaration. We haven't got one. Get your kit together. You ought to report back to your headquarters. staff to train all you people. If only you'd come when there was more time. Excuse me. Please sign that. We'll send you later. Thank you. Bye -bye. Joe, it's been a nightmare. They've come in the thousands. Yeah, no. Although we want them now, it's impossible to cope. It's been like this ever since it started. Have you heard from Gwen? Your family's been evacuated, Joe. I'm oh, good. Don't have to worry about them then. Any reports on atom bombs? Well, that's something anyway. We've always expected this. But whoever would have thought it'd be caught a second time, so soon after the first. Clear the building. All right, everyone. Clear the building, please, as fast as you can. Supper's almost finished. If you don't hurry, you won't get any. Supper? Yes, that's what I said. It hasn't happened. There's still time. 